Hey YouTube, let's take a little time to talk about a very powerful way to model inside of Fusion 360 called parameters. Uh, whenever I can, I try to link to parameters as I'm doing designs. Um, sometimes it seems like they're going to be more work up front, but over time as you make changes, you'll quickly understand how they can make your life a lot easier. So let's jump in and take a look at some parameters. Uh, to start out with, I'm just going to do this as an individual part. So I'm going to go to sketch and choose a rectangle, center point rectangle, and click on the top plane. I'm gonna drag out a rectangle, and uh, I'm gonna enter a couple dimensions here. I'm gonna give this dimension a value of two, I'm gonna tab over, and I'm gonna give this dimension a value of three. And one of the very simple uh, parameters or equations that you can do is to kind of relate different dimensions to each other. So in this case, maybe what I want is I want the width of the rectangle to always be twice as much as the height. So if I double click on this dimension, I can click on this dimension and do times two. So the shift eight is your multiplication sign times two and I hit enter and now we have a value of four. If I were to make this 1.5, we get three. So we've, we've quickly tied those two values together which can be uh, pretty handy at times. So what I wanna do now is stop my sketch. I'm gonna click on a home view to extrude and then I'm gonna go ahead and grab the extrude command and I'm gonna give this an extrusion value of one inch. And I'm gonna go ahead and click OK. Now you may have heard uh, Fusion is referred to a parametric history-based solid modeler. The history-based part means that we can go down to our timeline and modify uh, sketches or features instead of starting from, from scratch. What the, param what the parametric part means is on the modify menu, if we go to the drop down, we'll see that there's a list of parameters. Now, right now, uh, this model's in an unsaved state, so it doesn't give me what the model name is. But if I expand this out, you can see I've got a uh, sketch and I've got an extrude. And here, if you look, we can see that the name of this dimension is dimension one, and this one is dimension two. Extrude one, dimension three, and if we look, there's our, there's our linked formula that we did, and there's just the typed in width that we did. So what I could do is come up to these and I can name these width, I can name this height, I can name this one thickness, and now I kind of understand what these parameters do. And if you watch on screen, if I change this, it updates everything about the box. If I change the thickness here to 0.5, it makes it skinnier. And uh, I can even change the taper angle. If I add five degrees of taper or minus five, you can see the walls are tapering in or out. Let's go ahead and hit zero. So this would allow you to go into, instead of you know going and editing the sketch and editing the extrusion, we can open up the, the parameters box and change all the parameters at one time. So that's kind of a quick rundown on how to go about uh, finding parameters, naming parameters, and changing them. I've got another example kind of drawn up here. Pretty simple. Uh, I have one component and a second component. This one I called the block and it has a hole on it. And this one I drew a shaft. And what I would like to do uh, in this example is I would like the shaft diameter to always be 50 thousandths of an inch smaller than the hole diameter. And if I change one, I don't want to remember to have to go back and change it or go through the effort of finding it down in the timeline. So instead, I'm going to create some parameters to tie these together. So if we come down and look at the modify and change parameters dialog, expand this out. So here's what we have so far. We have a block and you can see I've already created a width and a height dimension, three by two. I've extruded it a thickness. It's currently one inch. And I put a, a hole on there. I called that hole and I gave it a value of one inch. There's a shaft component in here that has a, I gave that a name of shaft OD and that has a value of 0.75. Now what I'd like to do is I'd like to tie all these things together and the way that I'm gonna do that is by creating some user parameters. So let's go ahead and click on this and uh, it's important, we can't, we can't use the same uh, parameter names that we've already used, they have to be something else. So I'm gonna call this one bore dia and i'm gonna set the value equal to one i'm gonna go ahead and click ok now when i do that it really didn't do anything this this parameter isn't tied to anything yet this is just me 
creating some of the framework for some of the things I'm going to use. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the plus button again. And this time I'm, I'm going to call this one shaft DIA, shaft diameter. And I'm going to create an expression here. I'm going to reference bore. You can see it pops up in the quick access reference list now. Bore diameter minus 0 0.05. So I'm going to an, enter a mathematical formula. And what I do, it shows me that value is going to be 0.95 inches. And you can even enter a comment. Uh, sets the OD of the shaft to be 0.05 uh, smaller than the bore. And we can go ahead and click OK. So we can kind of understand later on, if we want to understand what that comment is, we can click on that and figure out what we were doing when we were creating the parameters. The problem is, uh, so right now I've created those two parameters, but they're not linked to anything. So what I would want to do now is come down here and let's find this uh, diameter dimension currently called hole. And let's uh, link this to something else. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reference the parameter we created up top. I'm going to call this bore. And as soon as I start, talk, start typing, you can see it pops up. Now it gives me a value of, of 1. And for this, I'm going to call this shaft diameter. And it's going to pop in a diameter. When I click OK, now, you, if we look at this from the top, we have 50 thousandths of an inch of gap between there, just like I've asked for. The part that makes this really easy to modify down the future is I would just have to come and choose Modify Change Parameters. I'm just going to come and change the bore diameter to be 0.75. And when I do, the diameter of the shaft updates and the diameter of the hole updates, maintaining that 50 thousandths of an inch gap that I've created. So... If you can put a little design intent into your design as you're starting out, you can see you can quickly and easily make modifications down the road. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. If you like the video, make sure you hit a like. And if you want to see more videos, uh, let me know what you'd like to see. And if you found this useful, uh, it'd be great if you'd subscribe. Thanks for watching.